so just soft and smooth on the skin. Such an elegant formula for a spot treatment. The eye cream that actually made a difference to some of my fine lines. Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the best special care skincare items of 2022. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and turn the door to go. Shatte kudasai! And when I mean special care, I mean things like spot treatments, eye creams, masks, things that basically aren't like necessarily necessary in a core skincare routine, but things that are nice to have and things that can kind of enhance your whole skincare game, if that makes sense. So we're going to be talking about those little bits and pieces today. The first product category I have is actually toner pads. I always have used toner pads, but it definitely wasn't like an everyday ordeal although I feel like in the last kind of few months I've been really into toner pads they are just such an easy quick useful way to cleanse tone, refresh, um, even soothe your skin, use it like a sheet mask. There's just so many ways that you can use them. I have come to realize that I do tend to prefer toner pads that are soft, smooth, and really gentle on the skin compared to ones that have a lot of texture on the cotton or have kind of harsh exfoliating ingredients. The first one I have is the So Good Feel So Calm Toner Pad. So you guys should already know that Sue Beauty, the creator of this toner pad, is one of my favorite Korean beauty influences and I just had to give a shout out to this toner pad because it definitely has been one of my go-to soothing and hydrating toner pads of this year. So the main ingredients in this one is cabbage leaf water, centella, aloe and then it also does have green tea so just hearing that you know that it is really a calming and soothing toner pad which it literally like the name is feel so calm toner pad so like well, yeah, as I mentioned, it is a really smooth, soft material. It doesn't really have that kind of really bumpy, rough texture that a regular toner pad would have. But you can see it does still have a little bit of texture, but it is so just soft and smooth on the skin. And it really does have a very generous amount of essence in the jar. As you can see, I just like swiped really quickly. And that's the amount of hydration you can get from just one pad. I do also love that their size is really big, like even against my cheek. You can see that it covers like pretty much my whole cheek. So I do often use them to do like a bit of a mini sheet mask. I just grab one of these, chuck it on my cheek, and it really does kind of give you that soothing and hydrating moment. Not only does this toner pad soothe and hydrate the skin, but it also can help with the overproduction of sebum and also helps with pore care. So I feel like that's something to really come out of Sue. Like I feel like that's all of the things that she always talks about with her skin. And it definitely has benefited even my dehydrated and dry skin as well. The other toner pad I have is actually the Parnell Sika Manu Cotton Clear Pad. So this one was a bit more of a recent discovery but as I said another one that has like a beautifully soft smooth textured cotton that I can't get enough of does also come with a pair of tweezers in the lid which is super helpful. This is what it looks like and it's actually a unbleached cotton. I don't know if you can really see in the camera but it does have all the bits of the natural fibers of the cotton because because it's not bleached. There's not really a reason why cotton needs to be bleached. It's just like the aesthetic look of it. So I like the fact that they didn't go through the trouble to bleach it and left it as the natural material. As I mentioned, this one again is a really, really smooth cotton pad and I love the way it feels on my skin. I was often using it in the morning to have like a really nice, fresh wipe down of my face. This one does include Parnell's patented ingredient of Sika Manu Biome Complex, which does combine Centella asiatica and manuka honey from New Zealand. So it soothes while strengthens the skin barrier as well as having those antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties of manuka honey. It also does have LHA which is going to really gently exfoliate the skin. So I feel like it is that perfect toner pad for those who have sensitive but acne prone skin. Next I'm going to move on to spot treatments which this first one is definitely not something that I discovered this year. I've actually been using it for quite a while now 
but I did realize that it has never been in a best of video and I feel like it 100% deserves the spot. It is the Lion Pear Acne Cream. It honestly looks pretty much destroyed at this point because I am about to use it up, but I have mentioned it multiple times on my channel as my holy grail spot treatment. I will say that I don't suffer from very frequent breakouts, especially these days. I feel like I don't get them as often, knock on wood, but I do still tend to get hormonal breakouts just before my period. And whenever that happens, this is the one I go for. So in Japan, they do actually market this as a spot treatment for adults for hormonal acne and that is why I initially reached for it when I was living in Japan and honestly I have not looked back since. I will say it probably still works for other breakouts and all the times I've mentioned it I always have people um, mentioning that it's worked for cystic acne, it's worked for like smaller breakouts, bigger breakouts and if you do go through the comments of my videos I feel like there's always a lot of different people experiencing a lot of different types of breakouts and say that this has worked. Now that doesn't mean that I can guarantee it's going to work for you but it is a pretty affordable option and also like such an elegant formula for a spot treatment that I definitely want you to try it out. So the two main ingredients are ibuprofen piconol, ibuprofen piconol and isopropyl methylphenol. Isopropyl methylphenol or something along those lines. Basically they are antibacterial and anti-inflammatory so they're going to treat while also kind of lessening that inflammatory condition of your breakouts. And as I said the formula is just super elegant for a pimple cream. I feel like all the other ones I've tried in the past they're either really drying or really thick or even really opaque like leave some sort of like a white tint on your skin. But this one is just such a light lotion that just melts away on your skin and just blends out so so easily so I can use it any time of day underneath makeup it really doesn't matter I can use it like literally whenever wherever and that is one of the reasons if not main reason to why I keep coming back to it so yes if you haven't tried it already please please give it a go and the other spot treatment I guess you could say that I have today is the skin food seeker clear spot patch so I do feel like most pimple patches these days are pretty much the same but I did want to mention this one because I feel like it was my best pimple patch discovery of this year because it has a hundred patches in the pack which I think is the most that I've ever seen and then it does also come in three sizes including a very small patch. I've always wanted that smaller patch. I feel like most of my um, breakouts don't end up being very big. They just have like a tiny little bump and a lot of the time regular pimple patches seem to be a bit too big. I've only had the one pack and yet it has lasted me such a long time since it does have a hundred patches. I know it is a little bit harder to get compared to the other ones but if you can get your hands on it I highly highly recommend because it's just like it's great value for money too. Now we're going to move on to eye creams which I know is not something that everyone uses although I have used a eye cream for quite a long time now. I don't always think it's necessary in the sense that yes you can use your moisturizer instead of eye cream that's totally fine but for me I feel like having an eye cream actually makes me take care of my eyes more if that makes sense because I don't specifically get my moisturizer and apply an extra amount around my eyes and make sure it's blended really nicely but if I do have an eye cream I am going to take that extra step and care. So I do have two eye creams to mention in this video. The first one is actually the Claire's Fundamental Nourishing Eye Butter. So initially I actually opened this one for my partner Logan because he doesn't like that heavy feeling of eye creams around his eyes and even though the name is eye butter it's actually a really nice light kind of gel lotion texture and they actually do recommend it for even oily skin types due to that lightweight feel. It has been my go-to morning eye cream and then Logan has been using it I think both morning and night and it really does sink in easily and kind of hydrate and plump out that eye area without feeling heavy. It does use peptides as its main ingredient which is always a great gentle option for anti-aging. I definitely have been enjoying it even though I haven't mentioned it that much probably because I just haven't been doing any like morning routine videos but yeah definitely a good one to try especially if you have oily skin. And the other eye cream I have is the TM Vita A Bacuchio Firming Eye Cream. 
As the name suggests, this one does have a blend of vitamin A as well as bacuchiol, and it does even have peptides in it. So it is really a moisturizing and firming eye cream that is going to help give those anti-aging effects as well. So I did do a bit of a deep dive on this one in my TM brand review video. If you haven't watched it already, I highly recommend because I do go into um, detail of this one. I did feel like this was the eye cream that actually made a difference to some of my fine lines. Now I don't have a lot as you can see like I've just got a very kind of small amount on the outer corner and then like the middle of my eye but I do feel like this one after like using it consistently for a couple of weeks kind of helped to soften out and make my kind of bigger line in the middle of my eye um, shallower and less noticeable. So if you are looking for slow aging, anti-aging eye cream, this one does have vitamin A and bacuchiol and the whole TM skincare range is very, very affordable. So if you don't want to kind of spend a lot of money to get those ingredients, I feel like this is a great option and a great starting point um, for people who are looking for those ingredients in an eye cream. So next we're going to move onto masks which I feel like is the product that most people think of when they think of special care but I will say that I feel like I didn't use that many masks this year especially wash off ones if anything I did a lot of DIY masking with really thin cotton pads I just like really got into them this year I just feel like it is such an easy way and you can use the kind of products and toners you like but in all of that these are the standouts and I do have one wash off mask this is the I'm from beat purifying mask so this one I would like to claim as the clay mask for dry skin. If you don't have dry skin, you probably love clay masks. If you do have dry skin like me, clay masks are probably something that are a little bit, um, a little bit scary, let's just say, because some of them can seriously dry out your skin. But it is still nice to be able to reap the benefits of a clay mask, like cleansing your pores well, or kind of lifting those impurities. And this was the first clay mask that I felt that truly was not stripping of the skin's moisture. Obviously the main ingredient is beets, which is known to be a superfood. It is full of vitamins like vitamin A, B and C, as well as beta carotene. And it can have um, properties to soothe while purifying the skin. So this one can control sebum and lift those impurities, which we all get, like no matter how dry and dehydrated my skin is, still my T-zone, I get such clogged pores and rough skin texture. So it's going to help with that, but it is still going to increase Increase your moisture level as well and I remember the first time I used this when I was washing it off it almost kind of foams up a little bit when you add a little bit of water and start to wash it off and it felt so softening and like smooth on the skin and it did help to kind of deeply cleanse my face but my skin was still glowing afterwards and it wasn't completely dry which tends to always happen with clay masks so I was like so pleasantly surprised and if you are someone like me who does want to try dry clay masks but are afraid because you have dry skin, this is definitely the one that I would recommend. Now I have sheet masks. The first one I have is the Revectin Lotus Water Calming Sheet Mask. So other than my bulk pack sheet mask that have like 30 in a pack, this is the sheet mask that I've used the most this year. I don't actually know how many I've been through. I think it's probably about 10 of them. And the reason why I use this so much is because it is a simple, gentle, soothing, hydrating, basic sheet mask because I feel like most sheet masks these days have kind of like an ulterior motive. It's like poor care or it does this and that. Like there's always like a extra kind of benefit which is good usually but sometimes you just want something that's going to be deeply hydrating, soothing to your skin, something you can use even if your skin is flaring up or a little bit irritated and this would always be the one that I reach for. This one is a deeply hydrating sheet mask that uses lotus flower extract and hotunia cordata to soothe the skin and I also do love how thin and like what do you call it, like adhesive to the skin, this sheet mask is. I definitely like to have a couple in my stash at all times. The other sheet mask that I have that was a definite highlight this year is the Number Zen Number 3 Tingle Pore Softening Sheet Mask. I know that you guys know that I love the Numbers in Number 3 Serum. I mean, I've mentioned it countless times and it is still my holy grail serum. This is essentially the sheet mask version of it. So like, 
Like, why wouldn't I love it, you know? But this one has become my go-to sheet mask to use the night before a special event because it really does clump up your skin, it hydrates it, it smooths your skin texture. Like, my cheeks, whenever I use this one, it's just like, like, it's just like a plump little, like, mochi, like, beautiful beautifulness whenever I use this so I have opted to keep them for special occasions I don't use them when there's like nothing important but I had my best friend's wedding not that long ago I used it the night before I'm also going to another wedding um while in America which I'll be going to in like a couple of weeks I'm gonna take on with me so I can use it the night before because it really does I don't know just elevate your skin and it is truly that special care item that's going to kind of give your skin an instant glow up when you need it. It does include those same fermented ingredients as the serum, but it does have this, I think it's like a plant complex kind of blend that almost has a bit of a tingly feeling on your skin. Initially when I used it, I wasn't sure if that was like supposed to happen. I was like, oh my God, I don't know, am I reacting to this? But it is supposed to have a little bit of that tingling sensation. And they say that's what helps to stretch and smooth out your pores. I don't know how it works, but it works for me and I love it. I think I have like two to three of these left, but I definitely will be restocking them whenever I run out. Last, I actually do have lip care and I do use lip balms on a regular basis. Although I will say my partner, Logan, he uses them like literally nonstop. So we do have a big stash of lip balms in this household because we just need them like literally everywhere. Like one here, one there, one in each bag. First, I have the Clavu Nourishing Care Lip Sleeping Pack. So I actually had seen this around and I thought it was kind of like a dupe for the Laneige one. I had used a sample of the Laneige one in the past and I wasn't that impressed. Like it was okay, but I felt like there were some days where I did feel like it still dried out my lips and it didn't last the whole night. Whereas this one, I was so pleasantly surprised. It does have a thick coating texture to it. It's not a really loose lip balm. So if you don't like that thick feeling, you might not like it as much, but it really does not moisturize and make that last all night like if I wake up in the middle of the night it'll still be on there and I was so impressed to how long the moisture lasted and not only that it is such a big jar like I know it doesn't look big but this is 20 grams of product. Usually lip balms do not contain that much product. I mean, this twist up lip balm has 2.4 grams, like literally 10 times the amount. For that, I feel like it is such a steal. I can't exactly remember how much I bought it for, but I think it was under $10 on sale. I think at max it's like $15 and it lasts such a long time. I've been using it for months now, like at least three months, if not more, and I've used it every single night. And like, I'm barely making a dent in it. There is so much product. I know the other day I like stabbed a little spatula in it to see how far it went down. And there's just still so much product in it. I honestly don't even know if I'll use it up in a year. Like there's just so much product. And the fragrance. Oh, it's so good. If you don't like fragrance, you might not like it, but it's like a vanilla cake kind of smell and I absolutely adore it. It does use sweet almond, avocado and apricot oil to nourish. And yeah, it is just such a good buy and I was very pleasantly surprised by this product. The other lip balm I have is the Mentholatum Premium Melty Cream Lip in Blooming Honey. So I have loved their regular melty cream lips for a long time now and I've mentioned them many times on my channel and I always do recommend them but they did come out with a premium version and I first was introduced to it by a subscriber they actually sent it to me from Japan and I was like oh my god this is wonderful and since then I have definitely been hooked and have like repurchased many I honestly think I have like a backup of three compared to the regular melty cream lips the premium version is definitely richer like that's the whole point of them they are a bit more nourishing and full of moisture so if you do have extra dry lips or if it's in winter time like now for most of you guys it is going to add that extra punch of moisture and I do feel that difference compared to the regular line but it still feels really light on the lips has that slippery kind of feel that does absorb into your lips so it's not going to feel like there's this thick layer sitting on top of your lips this one as well as the regular one do also have SPF I think of 22 or 25 so whenever people do ask me for a SPF lip balm this is always one of the ones I recommend and if you can get a chance to try it out I definitely recommend as well well that concludes my best of special care items of this year I really do hope you enjoyed it if you do want to check out any other best 
of skincare videos of this year make sure you click one of these two and i'll see you guys in the next one bye